notion called, there's a uh, occurrence in the market called intersection. Let me just tell you what the reason for me even getting into uh, or, re or uh, researching the markets as, 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 uh, as closely as I did. In 1973, 72, 73, 74, when I was working on this approach, there was a stock called equity funding, which was an institutional holding that a lot of the institutions owned. And the stock was in the high 30s, had come down quite a bit. And uh, a number of analysts on Wall Street were recommending the stock. And what happened at the time, which no one was aware of, there was fraud. Fraud existed within the company. And uh, management was, was not disclosing what they were doing with, uh, with there were a lot of bogus uh, transactions in the company. So the stock ultimately went into bankruptcy. Someone exposed them, this fellow by name, a fellow from a brokerage house called uh, John Muir, this guy named Ray Dirks, who got in trouble. He notified his clients he suspected some wrongdoing. And what happened, <coughs> eventually a lot of institutions got hurt in the stock. And fortunately, we weren't invested in there, but some of my friends were. And I looked at the price pattern, and I counted what I believed to be the sequential system I had created, and I said, yeah, I would have bought this stock at 18 or $20. And sequential would have gotten me in, and I would have been locked in the cockpit, and the plane would have been crashing. How do I prevent this? Well, there was another stock about the same time called W.T. Grant. And W.T. Grant was also going into bankruptcy, and had a common pattern with, uh, with uh, uh, equity funding. And I saw something in common with both of them. And specifically, I'm going to keep this chart here. And I'm going to draw another chart just to give you so I can dis distinguish between the two. Okay, um, let me just take you through this real quickly. You can see this close here. This close here is greater than the close for trading days earlier. Now, for a buy setup, you need nine consecutive closes less than the close for trading days earlier. Right here, this close is less than that close. This one obviously is less than four ago. This one is less than four ago, less than four ago. This one here is also less than four trading days ago. So you got a series of one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's just number these. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. What happened in the case of WT Grant and equity funding was a phenomenon that I, I was able to apply to other situations <laughs> since then. <clears throat> Unless you retarded the decline, you can see how steep this decline is becoming right here. The markets just say it's going down like this. You got to apply the brake. Somehow, the selling has to dry up. You used to have to be an indication of it. So what has to occur is something I call intersection. And you can see, as an example here, let me just show you one first. We've got a high on day eight. This day's high has to intersect. And by intersect, I mean this day's high has to be greater than or equal to the low so many days ago. In the book, I say day eight's high or day nine's high has to be greater than the low three trading days earlier. So day eight's high has to be greater than the low of day seven, six, five. Day three trading days earlier is day five. Is this high greater than that low? No way. Now. Day nine, that day's high, has to be greater than the low three trading days earlier. One, two, three. Is it greater than six's low? No, it's not. Now, in the book, you're getting the message that day eight or day nine has to be the high of either one of those days has to be greater than the low three days earlier. To really be precise, day eight or day nine has to be greater than the low three trading days earlier or any other day prior to that period of time. So on day eight of the setup, and this is really, it wasn't, it wasn't explicit enough in the book, and, and I'm sharing with you uh, to make it more explicit because it's very important. Some of the people I know who are using sequential, whom I shared it with in the previous 15, 20 years, only compared it with three days earlier. I'm saying you can compare the high on day eight with the low of day five of the setup, 
day four of the setup, day three of the setup, day two of the setup, or day one of the setup. And on day nine, the high can be compared with the low of day six, five, four, three, two, one. So if either one of those days is greater than the in the case of nine, six, five, four, three, two, one, and a day of eight, five, four, three, two, one, the low of any one of those days, you've got what I call intersection. Now, if you look over here, this is fairly typical. Day eight, obviously, is greater, the high of day eight is obviously greater than the low of day five. It's greater than the low of day four. So I mean, you can pick almost any one of these days, it is. This is, a common, this is a common occurrence. Day nine is greater than the low of six, five, four, any one of those. So you do have intersection here. It's telling you that the market, <coughs> the, the, the rate of descent is, is lessening or diminishing, whatever you want, might want to say. In this particular case, the WT grant or uh, equity funding, it just had a life of its own. Continuous selling. People are buying here, and they're probably hearing a rumor there's fraud in the company. You turn around and sell it instead of holding it. But that supply is drying up. So that's why you got these stocks unraveling. Now, same thing applies to commodities and futures. Generally, you get this pattern where you get the intersection. Occasionally, you get this. In markets, especially, they're going to the upside in a big breakaway. So you can almost use this lack of intersection <coughs> to tell you you're probably going into a breakaway phase in the market. Now, to perfect this intersection a little bit more, let me tell you, if day eight or nine don't qualify, then look at the next day. Could be day 10, where the close is less than the close four days earlier. We don't highlight day 10. We only say you need nine days for a buy setup. You look at that high versus three days ago. Four days ago, five, six, seven, eight, all the way back to the start of setup. Now, <clears throat> say for example, this particular day over here is not part of what would be called the extension of the setup. You wouldn't have 10 consecutive closes less than the close four trading days earlier. Say, for example, you had this, and the close this day was here. You've got an intersection, and me, let me, let me, I'm here. I may have confused you. I confused myself. Let me, let me go through this again. You keep looking for your intersection, even though the, 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 uh, uh, the period of, of, intersection, of uh, setup may be exhausted. And I, almost by definition, you're going to have to, you'd have a, a setup on that particular day. You want to see coffee? It was a breakaway market. Right? Yeah, you can show coffee as an example. Maybe that'll explain it a little better. And I understand now why people say a picture is worth a thousand words. In my case, it's probably worth five thousand words. So. Um, let me show you. See, for example, here's your breakaway. This is what you had in gold back in late 1979, 80, or whatever. Here's day one. Those are limit moves. These are all limit moves, but see, you got day one. You got your cell set up right here, but no intersection. So there's no count. His machine is programmed to pick up the count days. So you have no count throughout that whole period. You know, like an example right here on, on, on coffee. This is a, the July of this year when the, the market had that uh, explosion to the upside. You can see here that intersection did not occur throughout the whole period. And the way the uh, software is, has been written, uh, a numbers would appear for what I call a, a countdown phase, and you don't see them here. So that's telling me that there's been no intersection. And by intersection, once again, I mean the, the low of day eight being less than the high of day five, four, three, two, one, or day nine's low being less than the, uh, the high of day six, five, four, three, two, one. Just didn't occur. Now, our subsequent day, now this day, the market uh, uh, low, you can see because it was up limit, locked up limit, in fact, throughout this whole period, did not intersect the low of uh, three or more trading days earlier through the beginning of day one of the setup. And as a result, uh, uh, it kept you out of there. You also got an indication, and something I'll, I'll uh, discuss later, is how do you know when you're going into a setup phase, in this case a, a nine cell setup, that you're going to stop there and you're going to get a, a reflex move to the downside, or you're going to go into a, this period called countdown, which uh, we'll discuss with you shortly. And it's, it's difficult to distinguish between the two, but one thing I have seen, and I'll discuss, like I said later, but uh, if you do get intersection during this period, you normally do get a, a, an interruption where the market moves sideways or, or lower. I like to use this, the setup phase in this particular case. Say I bought down here. Say I was fortunate enough to get a, a buy signal, not a buy signal, a buy indication, a low risk, 
I like to call it a low risk, not to, to, make, to systematize this. Um, I like to say a low risk zone down here where you get some idea that the market's bottoming. Where would I take profits? Probably on a nine. So you can use these nines, you can use them differently. You can say, I'm gonna take a profit at this nine because I could get a hesitation in the market. I'm gonna sell half of what I own or a third. I've got a big gain here. So that's kind of the way I use the uh, a sell setup as well, taking profits. Now, let's just go over this once again on the, uh, the intersection. The high of day eight or day nine um, is, is greater, this is for a buy. This is the case of a buy, whereas you're looking at a screen, it was a sell. The high of day eight or day nine is greater than the low. Doesn't say the low. I didn't put low on here, unfortunately. Right. Greater than the low. Three or more. Let's emphasize that. Trading days before each day. And as I told you before, if this day is high, you go back, it is greater than the low. Three days back, this is day eight, say, of five in the setup. You qualify for intersection. And day nine, same thing. Go back. Say you didn't get that here, but you got day nine over here. You qualify. You got to look for that. That just slows the speed down and avoids those equity funding uh, WT grant fiascos, or even in the case, the reverse being here on the uh, coffee chart where you blow off to the upside. You want to retard that advance or the decline. 